Hello again. Welcome to another Nerd Rant, another Hi there. Nerd Rambling, whatever you want to call this. Yes. Today's topic, out of lack of other topics, we chose to talk a bit about Python in Houdini. Which and that is interesting. It's really interesting, especially to me. And it is funny. It's not only interesting, it's funny because I happen to know that you desperately hate Python. Nevertheless, you decided to work on Python quite a bit in the... In the, in, in the last four months or so? It's not one of my favorite languages, yes. Um, so you are sort of embracing it, although you don't really like it. It's a bit like... Let me yeah. tell me our audience that you are a C language, C type language guy, right? So you are all, all uh, only only feeling cozy if you can put semicolons at the, at the end of lines. And if this is not the case, if it's, this is not required, then it's not for you. And that any, is probably the biggest problem with Python. Any language that forces me to do a proper layout in my editor is not my language. I need to be able to write out a full program in just one line. Absolutely. And I agree. That is a very important feature of a programming language. Nevertheless, Python is unavoidable because it is everywhere in the field of CGI. Absolutely. We uh, can use it to, I don't know, extend Blender. We can use it to write code inside of Houdini. We can create a plugin inside of Cinema 4D. And we can even, I don't know, write uh, or, or, or connect the knobs of nuke using python and not only that it has an interpreter and you can use it to just write software for your computer that you can run not only on windows but on linux and on mac and pretty much everywhere because the language is not compiled but interpret interpreted that is correct and but i nevertheless blah, 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 good morning but i nevertheless Nevertheless, I think I'm still quite a beginner at Python, especially when it comes to Python and Houdini. Although I've been working with it increasingly, um, I think you are still the more advanced Python <laughs> okay. developer. Chances are because I was forced to use Python because in uh, Cinema 4D there just was no other way. Yeah. But that has been quite a while since I used that. Um, but let me ask you, why... Do you even bother writing Python inside of Houdini? Because we do have Vex, and Vex is a C-based language, and Vex is not really compiled, but sort of compiled to bytecode, and it is automatically multi-threaded. It has a lot of advantages. It has a lot going for it. Vex is super fast. Vex is very comfortable. Vex is the syntax I'm used to, and that's why I used it during the past five years, True. maybe six years that and I do now? Houdini. Python. Why? Well, well, maybe the same reason that you used Python back in Cinema 4D, because you said otherwise you wouldn't be able to pull it off. And that is only partially true for Houdini, because yes, in theory, you are able to pull everything off in VEX if you are willing to write lots and lots of code, because the main advantage for me with Python is the availability of ready-made libraries for it. So if I have a more complex problem, more complex mathematical problem, more complex geometrical problem, for example, um, like optimal transport, like exporting out of Houdini into some weird file format, um, like solving um, differential equations, stuff like that. Most likely you're going to find a Python library that's built for that. Okay, and you that only have to call handy. a function yeah. instead of just writing a whole solver yourself or re um, reverse engineering a file format and then spitting that out. So could I put it uh, everything or could I could I describe it like this? Um, so you, you don't want to use Python, you just do because otherwise you don't have access to the libraries that you want to use. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically that. Basically, oh, nice. basically I'm, I'm, I'm two levels in of being lazy. I uh, see, I see. Nevertheless, great, because if you can extend Python inside of Houdini with these libraries, then you expand the possibilities quite a bit. Yes. Especially with, I don't know, linear equation solvers and matrix solvers and stuff like that. That is all not built into VEX. Absolutely. And um, the inclusion of Python 3 since, I don't know which Houdini version it was now, but it's mm. now in Houdini 19, it's standard, makes it very easy to just as a friend of mine called it, cargo cult on pip to um, <laughs> deliver your libraries um, properly and install it once you set up your paths in Houdini. And we did a quick free tutorial of how doing that. So it's just like, 
in general, most of the time, it's just pip install this or that library, and then it's there in Houdini. Okay, that means once you get this going yeah. and you watch the tutorial, make it work, then you can extend Python in all directions imaginable. Yeah. And that means you can extend the feature set of Houdini by installing these libraries. Absolutely. And that sounds actually quite interesting. Yes. Um, and then it's just coping with getting the data over from Houdini's Python module into the library, which is not as bad as, as it sounds when you're doing it for the first time. It's a bit weird. What, what are we talking about here? Uh, like a, a vector in Houdini Python is a different object as a vector in NumPy or what? Yeah, for example, that, but that's not the huge problem. Um, yeah, reformatting matrices or um, arrays can be uh, tedious at first, but you're going to get used to it. Um, it's just more accessing point attributes and stuff like that, uh, running over points, yeah. just writing those out into an array and then getting that into a NumPy array. And how does it how does this go so i have say some data on points in houdini then i have to really read all this data and then reformat it to a different format to pass it on to the library it depends what the library expects okay. um, but usually um, you're building an iterator and then iterating over geometry and uh, reading out individual um, uh, yeah, uh, attributes data an iterator you say mm -hmm. that brings me to a question um, that pops up in my head what about performance Python, as I said, is not compiled, so um, I expect it to be slow. Um, it depends on what you do. Um, I mean, most of those libraries in the end are wrapped C libraries. Okay. The quick ones. Okay. So, yeah, okay, yeah, because you can sort of easily integrate uh, C based code into Python. Yeah. So that means these libraries are written in C and probably even. Um, running uh, uh, in parallel? In the end, it depends on the library um, you're using. Um, mm -hmm. There are also libraries that even run on the GPU. Um, you can also um, yeah, do some... Um, Python on the GPU? Yeah. But that, again, is the, then a wrapped function. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. CUDA or yeah, 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 exactly, or exactly okay. that. Um, and those libraries are very fast. It just depends what you're finding there. Um, if you have some libraries for file export, those are usually native Python. But then again, file export is not that computationally heavy. So yeah, okay. most of the time, matter. it depends on the quality of the library. Be, be, at least when you're using Python in Houdini like I do, the lazy man's way, um, just importing libraries and using those. But that means um, that you're using Python sort of as an interface to be able to use the software. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And would these libraries be available in a format that I would be able to use them in VEX directly, I would prefer that. Okay, I see. But um, in the end it isn't, and so it's down to Python for me. And Python is a bit um, alien in some, yeah, some of its conventions, um, and some of its, um, yeah, how they handle um, variable declarations. Um, that makes it a bit haphazard, in my opinion. Um, but one very powerful thing that I'm still struggling to grasp fully and still trying to understand its power more and more is iterators in Python. Those are mm -hmm. so much more powerful than in VEX, for example. I mean, Python is a funny language because uh, it uh, includes many of the programming paradigms. You can go full object-oriented if you want to. You can go functional even, mm -hmm. especially with the iterators. You can use inline functions and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so uh, I think... A lot of people uh, advertise Python as the perfect language to learn programming, but to me, it never no. appeared to be the perfect language no, to learn. No, absolutely not. I would disagree. Yeah. Um, as I often state, I think Blender is a good idea to learn CGI mm -hmm. because it reduces the the feature set and it g gives you one distinct way of achieving a goal, and that is um, not true in Houdini. And like this. I, I, I don't know. In VEX, you just have one programming paradigm. Yeah, and absolutely. It's procedural. And, uh, and with Python, there are so many different ways that you can do stuff that I don't think that it is the perfect language to start learning programming. Yeah, with. exactly. I think, um, yeah, starting out on a more low level uh, programming language without that many high level concepts forces you um, to build code that is stricter, safer, and easier to read in some ways. Yeah. 
Um, for example, the variable declaration in VEX or any C style language, you have to give it a type and that's going to store its type. Not so in Python. Python tries to infer types, which can... And a lot of people would say that is a, a strong point of Python because, hey, who wants to do strict typing? But um, you can try in Python to create a variable, set it to two or to three and then divide it by 16 and you will see if you... Do not uh, set the variable with a point <laughs> to make it a float. You will uh, find that the results might not be what you expect. <laughs> so, yeah, it has advantages and disadvantages. But I think um, from what you are telling me, the use case that you have for Python um, is, in a, is such that this does not play a big role, right? Because you are just using it as an interface. So as long as you know a little bit of programming you can just use it right you have to be aware of those quirks let's call it like that and have to make sure that your variables are specified the way they w well, you want them to be you want to make sure that the uh, data types and data formats are um, in the way uh, the library you're using expects it um, but that about it mm. um, and one very nice thing that um, got bug fixed through the help of uh, side effects and uh, I think Paul Ambrosius um, initiated it, is the ability to also do multi-threading within Python subs now since a few versions. And you even have a tutorial for that. We, of course, do have. Um, yeah, and it's locked now. So <laughs> because yeah, I'm not logged in, but here yeah, it is. Yeah, it's that one. It's the first um, on our website. Um, okay, but that sounds really interesting because it, uh, yeah, it smells like speed. Um it is in a way um it's got some not everything is multi-threadable so um mm -hmm. you're running into the same issues as uh, if you're running uh, parallel code in vex or writing parallel code in vex um not everything is decently multi-threadable you have to be aware of that but in this case um it was really a nice approximation to the solution we're trying to find which was optimal transport mm. and um in contrast to the perfect solution for optimal transport scaling, I think quadratically, mm -hmm. um, this just scales linear. And it's parallel, so it is faster. Okay, that's nice. So overall, Moritz, um, can I summarize what you said by stating Python is not the most beautiful language in the world? At least to me. I mean, it, it depends on your personal preference. Absolutely, as always. Um, but you would advise our audience to at least give it a try because the possibilities are endless due to the many libraries available. Again, I think it's it depends on what you want to do. So um, I'm using Python in a sub level. So I'm using Python for geometry and data manipulation. That's mm -hmm. just the way I work with Houdini and what I find um, is the very interesting, the very essence um, of Houdini, just being able to wrangle data and uh, to build mathematical, physical, biology-inspired setups. If that is not what you like to do, um, and if you don't have a solid grasp on scripting, um, or scripting in Houdini particularly, it might not be for you. And also there is um, another huge area on which Python in Houdini comes in handy, and that is building user interface, building user interactions. Digital assets, exactly. Digital assets. And I think, again, to point out, Paul Ambrosiusen just released a um, course on Python states in Houdini, which, of course, is massively helpful if you want to build assets that tools. your artists, tools, they can just use in the viewport easily. Yeah, my two cents are that it is it is a good idea to look into Python inside of Houdini, because no matter what you really want to do, if you just want to create your custom shelf tool, or if you want to create a little user interface, even without viewport interaction for your digital asset or uh, such things, or an importer, or exporter, I think we had a tutorial with um, Niklas Rosenstein yep. once about exporting SVG through yep. Python, stuff like that is really easily done in Python or render scripts or so. Yep. So looking into Python is probably not a bad idea. And yeah. now that you are putting out more and more tutorials about using Python for geometry, modification using libraries, um, it just at, uh, expands the, the things you can do with Python. Absolutely. So, and let, let me just elaborate on that export thing. It's ridiculously easy to get out geometry or um, curves out of Houdini um, using Python. 
for ex in, in any really arcane weird format. And we have a free tutorial on that one as well, where I just export a few splines or lines in from Houdini to DST, which is an embroidery machine <laughs> format, which is really just a descendant on from very early punch cards. And it's such a weird format. It's Fantastic. a mixture of plain text, of binary data. It would be quite elaborate to write your own exporter and just finding the right library. It's really literally 10 or 20 You probably lines. wouldn't have done it, right? Without Python. No, absolutely not. I wouldn't have. <laughs> so if you want to get some solutions to large systems of linear equations using a solver, or if you want to <laughs> embroider something nice on your jacket, no matter what you want to do, learn Python and use it in Houdini. Just maybe um, as an add-on, um, we have a few tutorials on Python. You mentioned that. But also there's a very good blog from the Technical University in Berlin, um, which I think is discretization.wordpress.com. Should I try to look it up? Try looking up discretization uh, WordPress. Um, and that is by the Mathematics Visualization Group or something. I'm not sure how they're called. Um, but it's, it's used by mathematicians from the Technical University of Berlin to visualize um, their findings. And they have a very nice section on using, I think, SciPy or NumPy inside of um, Houdini using Python again. This um, one? Nope, definitely not that one. Mm. We'll link it in the description. Let's, okay. just, let's just put it that way. That sounds interesting. Yes. All right, that, that's a brief one. That's just my beginner experience with Python in Houdini. I quite like it for what it is. Um, it's quite alien to me still in some ways. I, right. I, I I will have a look. The The multi-threading is interesting. Sounds interesting to me. I mean, you're used to this. You're used to Python. I think you're going to have a much, much easier time than I did. Hopefully. All right. Great. Um, so have a look into Python. Thanks for <laughs> listening. <laughs> yeah. Um, look out for Python in Houdini. Um, and until next time, as always, cheers and goodbye. Goodbye.